Around this time last year, we all thought Ninjago ended with its final season crystallized. But Ninjago has returned with a brand new show, Ninjago Dragons Rising. But not all of us can afford to keep buying the latest sets. So today, I'm going to be building whatever I can from Dragons Rising without spending any money. Let's see how this goes. So what exactly is Dragon's Rising? It's an official sequel series to the last 15 seasons of Ninjago Masters of Spinjutsu and Ninjago. What they've done here is they've been able to break out of the previous continuity with an event known as The Merge, when all 16 realms established in Ninjago lore merge together. The first half of season 1 was released earlier this year, and the second half is coming out in many countries very soon. Today, let's just focus on the first half. Now they introduced two new main characters, with the first being Aaron, A-R-R-N. He's a normal guy, but he learned Spinjitsu on his own, which I guess is pretty cool. In the first part of Dragon's Rising, Aaron wears a casual outfit, with dark blue pants and an orange shirt. And since we can't spend any money, we have to use only parts I already have. So I'm going to take these two figures. We've got a fireman from an old LEGO City Forest Fire set. And this other guy from the pick a brick store. I'll take the fireman's torso piece and the other guy's dark blue pants. And for Aaron's hair, I'll use Finn's hair from Star Wars. We've got an Aaron figure which looks pretty similar to Aaron from the show now. The actual figure was only released in Ninjago City markets, which is huge and unaffordable for many people. Now in the show, Aaron has a grappling gun, so I'm gonna just quickly make that out of some of my own pieces. We've got this first one which uses a space blaster, and this other one which uses a stud shooter and rope piece to actually fire a grappling hook on a rope. But I like the space blaster design more, so let's use that. Now for the second main character, we have Sora. She's a mechanic who's Aaron's friend, and they compete in a mech racing race together. More on that later. But Sora is an interesting person because she has an unheard of elemental power that's pink. I don't like her power and what the show tried to establish, you know what I mean. But she's still a main character. So to make Sora, I'm gonna take these figures, I'll take these dark blue pants and the white torso from a lab guy. And yes, in case you didn't know, LEGO Friends parts are indeed compatible with normal LEGO minifigures. So I'll use the pink hair from this LEGO Friends figure. And our two main characters are done so we can move on. Of course, they had to realize that Dragon's Rising would lose most of its fan base if they didn't bring back characters from the previous show. So around half of the old ninja team returns. I'm going to switch to my other minifigure case which contains more Ninjago items. The first returning ninja we see is Lloyd. Now while Aaron and Sor are in that race, Aaron ends up using Spinjutsu. Lloyd spots him and that's how they meet. Lloyd has a pure green outfit this time around, so I'll just use the only green outfit I have, which is this one. Now the premise for this show is pretty interesting in that the merge actually scattered the main ninja team across different realms, so a significant part of the show is about trying to find their lost teammates. And the next ninja they find is Kai, the master of fire. Strangely enough, all of the ninja get matching uniforms again this season, and it's a pretty refreshing design actually. They've got like big scarves used as their head wraps. To emulate this design without using the actual mold pieces, you can make use of the Ninjago movie head wraps. They have a similar feeling with the face, feeling very properly wrapped up and covered. So I'll make a quick custom of Kai using his Season 11 suit and Season 8 head wrap. I'll also use some legacy stone armor to create the shoulder pads to match the actual figure a bit more. The next ninja we can make is Zane. If you have any of the Ninjago core suits, they work perfectly fine because they are featured quite a bit throughout Dragon's Rise during flashbacks and when the first time the ninja are met. Another way you could try to make the new ninja head wrap is to use half masks from the tournament suits. If you flip them upside down, it sort of gives off the same feeling. Or you could just use the bottom half of the movie mask. The effect is pretty similar. And the final core ninja we see in Dragon's Rising is Nier. Kai's sister, I mean the master of water. I actually already have a figure. I got it in a gift from a family friend. You can check out a video I made about that. But now our ninja lineup is done, almost. In Dragon's Rising, they introduced yet another new elemental master called Wildfire. Her powers look like fire, but they've been labeled as heat. I, I really don't buy it. 
But anyway, to make her, I'll use this suit from a Phase 3 Chima figure, Firecracker, and some generic parts to give her red hair. And speaking of Chima, you might be surprised to know that Chima, yes, the realm from Legends of Chima, a discontinued LEGO theme from 2015, has indeed merged with Ninjago. We're eagerly waiting to see it, so it's perfectly justified now for you to use your team of figures within Jago stuff. The villains introduced in this season are the Imperium. They're one of the new merged realms, and they're known for harvesting dragon energy to power their cities. I've got some simple customs of the Imperium guards, using some circular plates for the strange hats that they wear. And for Lord Ras, one of the Imperium warlords, I'll just use a Wookiee minifigure. They're both hairy, they're both animals. It works. Now I almost forgot one very important character from the lineup and that's Ryu. Ryu is a dragon. That's right, he's a baby dragon that they picked up in episode 1. In the sets he comes as a special molded piece and there's actually a very rare dark blue variant from an event earlier this year that's selling for thousands of dollars. But to make Ryu with zero dollars, I'll use these small blue pieces, a wedge for his face and some jumper plates for his feet. I think I captured his face pretty well. But you know what else would be awesome? If you subscribed. <laughs> Alright, our characters are finally done and as always with these videos, it's time to build a mock. Usually with these videos, we either build something from the show that hasn't appeared in set form yet, or we try to recreate an existing set. This time I'd like to do both. Sora has a mech in the show that she and Aaron used to race. That mech has multiple designs. There's the roller skate version that we first see, it then transforms into a motorbike version. We also get to see a damaged version after a battle on a bridge with Lord Ras, and then there's the final proper walking mech version. In the sets, we got a strange hybrid version that merged the mech and the bike versions into a transformer. But the damaged version actually looks the coolest to me. It's very irregular and yet maintains a nice unified mech structure, so I'm going to try and make that. So first I'm going to try to shape the cockpit. I have this perfect pink piece from an ice cream truck that came out for the LEGO movie. It's curved and shaped like a car bumper and I think it'll work perfectly. I'll build up dark blue pieces around it, and strangely, these can be offset by half a stud due to the holes found on the pink frame. Now let's build the main body. When doing this, it's important to build for stability, so we'll use this reinforcing technique with brackets. We use two brackets and a connecting plate to push the bricks together from the top and bottom. That way the vertical displacement of the mech parts from each other is zero and it won't fall apart if you apply tension along the vertical axis. We can attach our main frame, some stabilizing fins, and now we can move on to the limbs. The mech has a sort of blocky look and we can reflect that in the arms. Now for the legs I want to have knees. Most Ninjago mechs didn't have knees for a while and that wasn't cool. To make knee joints, I'm going to need to take pieces from this big Star Wars set. You'll see why in a bit, but this took much longer than it should have. This set is built too well and taking apart the reinforcements was very tedious. I'm trying to recreate this joint found in the Legacy Golden Mech. It uses the special ball piece recessed inside these grey modified bricks found in that Star Wars set I just took apart. These allow for knee movement with a lot of friction and yet a wide range of motion. For the final touch, we need to add the flight stabilizers at the back of the mech, which provide some additional propulsion. I'll use these golden dish pieces and some bent Technic joints. And finally, our mech is done. That's it, we just built Dragons Rising. Do you remember how I showed you a secret project in a video a while back? This one, well it used to be a barren base plate but now it looks like this. I hope you can guess what I'm trying to do and it'll hopefully be done by the end of this season. Thanks for watching the first episode of Build Ninjas Season 3. I'm really excited to build Dragons Rising Part 2 at some point after I watch it. But in the meantime, stay tuned for what's coming next and please subscribe. Thanks. What do you want? Revenge!